past, I've done several episodes on file uploads, but one thing I haven't talked about is where that file is stored once it's actually uploaded to the server. Oftentimes, the file is just stored on the local file system that runs the Rails application, but there can be several disadvantages to this. Sometimes that server has limited disk space or bandwidth, and also if you want to make a cluster of Rails servers, that can add some complications. And also don't forget about the potential security issues with allowing users to upload files to your Rails server. So there are several reasons why you might want to store uploaded files elsewhere, and that's what I want to focus on in this episode. Now I already have this Rails application set up with Carrier Wave to handle the file uploads, like I showed in episode 253. And as you can see, it's set up to store the files on the local file system. But you can easily change this by changing the storage engine to Fog, which Carrier Wave will use to upload the files to the cloud. Now Fog is a Ruby gem that provides a standardized interface for interacting with a variety of cloud services. It can do a whole lot more than just manage file storage, but that's what I'm more interested in here in this episode. So with Fog, we can choose to store our uploaded files on Amazon S3, uh, Rackspace Cloud Files, or Google's Cloud Storage. In this episode, I'll be using Amazon S3, but Fog gives you the option to change that out easily. Now this tutorial does a nice job of walking you through how to use Fog. However, I won't need to go through this because Carrier Wave will be handling the Fog interaction for us. It's all behind the scenes. But what I will need to do is set up an Amazon Web Services account so that I can provide an access key ID in secret so that Fog will be able to connect to it. Setting up an AWS account is free and easy, but you will need to pay for what you use on the S3 service. So once you're signed up, just go to the security credentials page. And then from here, scroll down to the access keys and create a new access key if you haven't already. So this will give us the access key ID and secret which we can use to pass into Fog. Next, we'll need to create an S3 bucket to store the uploaded files in. I'll do that under the Management Console, and then go to the S3 section. So in here, I can create a new bucket, and I'll just call it RailsCast Example, and leave everything else at their default. There we go, now we have a bucket that we can tell Carrier Wave to upload the files to. Now if you check out the README for Carrier Wave, you can find some documentation on how to set it up for Amazon S3. We need to add Fog to our gem file and then add an initializer file with various configuration options, including our credentials that we set up for our Amazon Web Services. So going into the gem file for this Rails app, I'll add in the Fog gem, and you'll need to run the bundle command to install it. And then going into the initializers directory, I'll make a new uh, carrierwave.rb config file here. And then I'll just paste in the source code to set the credentials. And I'm just using environment variables here to pass in the ID and secret and the bucket name so I don't have to actually store those in the Rails app. And also note that the fog directory uh, setting should be set to the name of the bucket. Next I'll go into the uploader and we already set this to use fog for storage. However, it's also recommended if you're using fog to, all, to uh, pass in these two lines to include the MIME types module and process the image through set content type. So this way it sets the MIME type for the image uh, in case it's incorrect. Now when I restart the Rails app and visit it, you can see that our existing attachment is broken because that image isn't on S3, which is understandable. So let's try adding a new painting and see if that works. So I'll choose a new file here and then create painting. And notice that this Rails request is taking a while to respond, and that's because it's actually processing the image and uploading it to S3 during that time, and there it is. So while this works well enough, it's not very efficient because our entire Rails process is tied up while it's trying to upload this file to S3. And who knows, that might take a while. There are a couple of Carrier Wave add-ons to help resolve this problem. One is called Carrier Wave Backgrounder, which just simply moves the processing and uploading into a background process. Another is Carrier Wave Direct, which handles uploading the file from the client side directly up to S3. And this is what I want to demonstrate here. To set this up, I'll go into my gem file and add in the Carrier Wave Direct gem there. And also you'll want to set up another gem to handle the background jobs. I'll use Sidekick here, but really you could use whatever gem you want for this. By the way, I cover Sidekick further in episode 366. Next, I'll go into the Image Uploader class and include a module called CarryWave Direct Uploader that the gem provides. And this also means that the storage will default to Fog, so I no longer need to specify the storage option. I'm also going to remove the store directory line because it'll just default to uploads, and I want that because it's automatically going to insert a unique identifier into the store directory path. 
Now to get this to work, I'll need to change the way the file upload works in our Rails app. You can see that the file field is right in line on the same form where I enter the name of the painting. And this won't work because the file needs to be uploaded directly to S3, which means it will need to be in a separate form from the one that gets submitted to our Rails app. So what I'm going to do is move the upload form into the index template here at the bottom, and then they can enter in the name of the painting after it's uploaded. Or you might want to reverse this and have the file upload form after they create the record. Now creating a form that uploads directly to S3 can be a little tricky, but thankfully this gem provides a helper method called direct upload form 4, which will do just what we want. You just need to pass in an instance of an uploader, which you can grab as demonstrated here, and then you'll need to set the URL that you want it to redirect to after it's uploaded successfully. So this is what I'll do in the index template. Instead of having a link here for adding a painting, I'll just paste in the code for adding a direct upload form 4 call, passing in an uploader, which I need to set in the controller, and having a file field in here. So going into the index action of the controller, I'll just paste in the code for setting this uploader and setting the action that gets redirected to to the new painting URL, which will end up displaying a form where we can enter in the name of the painting. Okay, let's try this out. Reloading the page, we now have this form where we can upload it directly on the index template and uploading this image will go to Amazon S3 and then actually upload the image to there and then redirect us back to this form where we can fill in the rest of the details about this painting. And notice it passes in the upload path directly in through a parameter called key. So this key parameter is important and we'll need to remember it when we go throughout the second form. So I'm going to pass this into the painting model in the new action, just setting key to params key. And key is actually an attribute that the uh, carrier wave direct gem provides when we mount the uploader and it already makes the attribute accessible on the model. And then I need to go into the form template for that painting and uh, pass that key in through a hidden field so it persists. Now I no longer need this file field since the file was already uploaded, but it would be nice to have uh, something that displays the name of the file here. So I'm going to add that and there's not really a consistent way to grab the name. So I'm actually going to move this logic into the painting model. Let's just call it image name. And so here's what that method definition would look like in the painting model. Uh, basically you can call image path or image file name depending on whether or not the record is created with the file which is a little bit cumbersome but hey it works and I'll grab the base name of that and return that if there is an image that was uploaded. So now reloading this page and we get the name of the file and then we can just give it a name here and then create the painting. So this kind of worked. Our record is created here, but our thumbnail image graphic is broken. But however, if we click on it, you can see it brings us to this full size page, which shows us the uh, full painting. And this works because this is just referencing the exact same image that we uploaded. It's not the thumbnail version. Now Carrier Wave Direct disables the automatic processing of the images, so it's up to us to manually trigger the creating of the thumbnail version, but it expects us to do it in a background job. Now I'll do this all within the painting model. I'll just paste in the code. Uh, so what this will do is have an after save callback for queuing up the image processing. So it'll only do this if the key is present, which is basically if we have uh, uploaded a file through uh, S3. And then if so, we're going to call perform async on this image worker class, which is defined down here. And this is just uh, includes the sidekick worker. So we'll use that to handle the background job. And I'm just including this class directly li in line here in the model, but you might want to move it off into a workers directory. So what this will do is uh, fetch the matching painting record and reset the key. And then it'll set this remote image URL attribute and image here is the name of the uploader that I mounted in this model. And it'll set this to the URL to the file on S3 by fetching it through this call. And that will end up re-triggering the image processing so it'll generate the thumbnail version. Now I already have Redis set up and running, so all I need to do is start up Sidekick so that it can process the background jobs. Now let me try this again. I'll choose another file and then upload it, and then give it a name, and then create it. And this creates the record, but it's still a broken thumbnail image. However, if I wait a little bit and then reload the page, it'll process it in the background and there's the thumbnail. So that works, but it would be nice to have something displaying that is processing instead of a broken image. 
I'll do this really quickly here through this command to generate a migration for adding a column called image processed, which will be a Boolean, to the paintings table. And then I'll migrate the database to add that column. So back in the painting model, in the background worker job, where after it's done processing the image and uploading it to S3, I'm just going to update that column, which is called image processed, and then set that to true. And then I'll go into the painting partial where I'm displaying that thumbnail image and just do something like this, where it checks if the image pro has been processed and if so, it'll display it. Otherwise, it'll just say processing. All right, so this time when I create a new painting, it's going to show processing until the background job picks it up. And then if I reload, there it is. There's the thumbnail version, yay. So this is working great, but it only allows me to upload one file at a time. What if I want to support multiple files using JavaScript? Now I covered jQuery file upload in episode 381. While we could integrate that into what we have right now with Carrier Wave Direct, instead I want to show you a new project which doesn't use Carrier Wave at all but just uploads directly to S3. While I don't have time to show you every step in the process, let me demonstrate how it works and then I'll walk you through the code. So here I have a file upload dialog, which I can choose multiple files from, and then it shows me a progress bars as they're uploading, and then it shows me the images uh, here just through Ajax. So this is really cool. These files were uploaded directly to S3. Rails was only involved in creating the painting records. Now let me quickly walk you through the code to show you how this works. Uh, this is the index template where I have this form which uploads directly to S3, and uh, I'm using a custom helper method here, and I'll show you that in a minute to generate the form. And I'm telling this once it's done to basically submit to the paintings controller create action and passing in the uploaded file URL to uh, as this parameter. Now here's where I'm defining that custom helper method to generate the form. And the logic in here can get pretty complex. So I'm delegating most of it to this S3 uploader class, which you can see is defined right in line here. And this uh, shows you what various options can be passed in and their default values, which you can override. And most of this is uh, fairly simple, except this part right here, where I'm setting the policy and signature that Amazon S3 expects, because it's a little particular in how it passes this in. It needs to be encoded properly, and also uh, expects various attributes like this that I'm passing in. So if you do want a form that uploads directly to S3, just toss this helper file into your Rails app, and then you can use this helper method. And then finally, I have this CoffeeScript file, which has this call to file upload. And this works very similar to what I show in episode 381 with the add in progress callbacks being the same. The main difference is this done callback, which uh, just handles the uh, posting of the data to the URL, which is supplied by the form. So this way, it'll trigger the creation of the painting and passing the URL of the file to it. Now another important piece of the puzzle is the cores configuration of your S3 bucket. So if you grab the properties of this, you can edit the cores config, and I have it set to this right here, but you might want to change this, especially once you get into production, because it mentions the localhost 3000 as an allowed origin, and you want to put in your production domain here once you uh, deploy. So what this configuration does is allow us to upload files using JavaScript to our bucket and check the progress of it. Now I am showing the smaller versions of the paintings on this gallery page, but those are actually the full file size versions. I'm just scaling it with CSS, but you'll probably want to generate a thumbnail version and you can do that in a variety of ways. You could set up an EC2 instance and just have that processing the images, or you could stick with Carrier Wave Direct and have it process it from your Rails app. Or you could even do the processing on the client side before you upload the images. So many different options there. Well, that wraps up this episode on storing files on Amazon S3. I hope you found it useful.